Okay, the number seems to be stabilizing now. It's nice to see that we've got a very um, busy webinar today. Welcome everyone to this, the seventh, I believe, uh, CNCF webinar. Today we're going to be having an introduction to CNI. Um, we're very fortunate to have two presenters today. We've got Ken Owens from MasterCard and Brian Boren from Weave. Um, during the webinar itself, if you have questions, you're not, as an attendee, you're not able to talk. So please use either the chat window down the bottom or the Q&A uh, functionality that's down the bottom as well. And I'll read those and then find opportune moments to interrupt the presenters and ask them those questions. But do feel free to ask throughout. Um, we will also have time for questions at the end, but uh, we find that normally it's, it's better if we ask questions during because it makes it a little bit more interactive. Um, I'm going to give you some more links for upcoming webinars at the end, but I think now, uh, without further ado, we should just jump into it. Um, Brian, Ken, are you ready? Yep. Yeah, yep. we're ready. Take it away. Great, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. And so, um, please, Jenna will kind of talk about what is CNI. Uh, the uh, container networking interface, um, who uses CNI runtimes and the plugins aspects, some of the recent developments um, within the, the container networking space and CNI, and then some of the future things that, that we believe will be of great interest to everyone on the call. And so what I want to do is sort of start off with the um, the CNI reference, the CNCF reference architecture, kind of help set the stage for how CNI and to the um, to the reference architecture, and so um, as you see on the left hand side of the slide, the the reference architecture is sort of, of you know starts with the app definition and development, um, and then below that is your orchestration and management layer. Um, below that's the runtime, which is where uh, CNI fits very squarely into sort of the the runtime aspect of of how the containers are going to network, how you're going to segment your your networks, um, how you would do service discovery and service um, a kind of a fulfillment pieces that are involved in, in the uh, runtime of the, of the container network. Uh, that is your provisioning layer, and then we we sort of call out an infrastructure layer, that knowing that there is infrastructure there, but we're not in the CNCF. We're not too really interested or specific in infrastructure components itself. Does that make make sense to everyone? Where sort of the runtime sits and and what sits within that runtime? Yeah, I guess so. Good. All right, I don't see any questions on the chat, so we can go on to the next slide. So when you kind of think about what is CNI, um, you know the the whole aspect of of CNI is really this generic plugin based networking solution that that's for application containers that are on um, on containers or on um, a container type of, of um, software. It originated with um, CoreOS as part of Rocket, and as as part of the CNCF charter, we wanted to look at at bringing in not just the the CNI interface model and the plugins, but also kind of the ecosystem around the um, CNI. And so, I go into a little bit more of the the specifics around what CNI is and what it does. Thanks, Ken. Um... So uh, I want to put this uh, this kind of high-level diagram up, uh, showing uh, the the very uh, full operation. Um, you have some kind of runtime. Uh, this is uh, maybe a container runtime like Rocket, or maybe that's an orchestrator like Kubernetes. Uh, other orchestrators use CNI, Mesos, for instance, um, and it it makes a call to a plugin. Um, We'll look at more detail how that works in a second, but it is based on some configuration of how it wants the network uh, to be set up. Um, and the plugin is the thing that specifically cover, configures your network for your containers. Um, what is your network? Well, could be anything. Uh, that's kind of why we need a, a, a plugin architecture. Um, so this. This could be a cloud network like a, like at Amazon or Google. Um, this could be a very simple Linux uh, Linux networking uh, stack. Uh, it could be an overlay network if if you need one of those. Um, 
uh, or it could be anyone, any kind of, of uh, networking solution from any provider. That's the whole thing. So this uh, kind of cloudy bit at the bottom, uh, from the point of view of CNI, we do not care what that is. Uh, we want to make it possible for anyone to come up with a plugin, any network provider to come up with a plugin to talk specifically to their network and be told what to do by any container runtime. So let's uh, drill into that in a little bit more diff diff detail. Um, uh, suppose we want to um, actually make a CNI call. What uh, if we want to, you know, pretend to be a, a, a container runtime or an orchestrator? Um, we all we really do is we set some environment variables and we run the plugin. The the plugin is very simply uh, a a Linux program. Um, and uh, so let's walk through some of those environment variables. Um, first one up is the uh, is the command. Um, so currently we have three commands: uh, add, del for delete, uh, or to inquire the version of the plugin. And add means uh, to add a network interface to a container. Um, so also in the environment variables, uh, we need to pass in uh, which container we're talking about the network namespace, that's kind of a, a low level detail of how these things work, um, a path, which we'll get to in a minute, and the name you want this interface inside the container to be called. Um, the last thing you do is you send in, on standard in, a JSON document, which defines how you want the network set up. And that's it. The, um, uh, uh, the plugins just run, do their job, and exit, whatever that involves. Maybe that involves calling out to a central controller for the network. Maybe that involves just tinkering with stuff on the local Linux machine. Um, it really depends on which kind of a network you're using. Uh, let's take a look at that JSON document. Uh, here's an example um, uh, on the screen now. Um, and again, let's walk through that. Uh, first up is the version, uh, and this means this is the um, this is the version that the caller understands. That means that a plugin can speak different versions of CNI spec uh, and adapt according to who it's talking to. Uh, so the the caller says, "I I understand version 0.3 in this case, and I expect you to talk 0.3 back to me." Um, we pass in an, a name and a type. Um, the uh, uh, type maps to the, the kind of network you're using, so that that's uh, uh, one of those overlay networks or whatever. And this is in fact expected to be the name of the binary which implements the plugin. Um, so all around, it probably would have been a better idea to name that thing plugin name, but it's called type. So we, we make do with that. Um, beneath that, any parameters required for this network. Um, I just put foo in as, as an example. Um, some of those parameters are defined by the CNI spec. Some of them will be understood specifically by one plugin. Uh, and because it's JSON, we can, we can put whatever we like in there. Um, and then the block at the bottom, this is a, an IPAM block, which stands IP address management. Um, so this is uh, very typically found in CNI definitions because um, uh, because we segregated out the job of configuring the network from the job of allocating IP addresses. Uh, let's take a look at that in pictorial terms. Um, so the runtime uh, gathers up its config and makes a call to the plugin, uh, sending setting those environment variables, setting the the JSON in on standard in. Um, the network plugin wants to call an IPAM plugin. Uh, and when this whole thing was being designed, the, the thought was, well, okay, we need an interface for that. Well, we've already got an interface, which is talking about networks. We just use the same interface. So basically, the first plugin passes the same command to the second plugin, to the IPAM plugin. And uh, in this way, you can mix and match. Uh, so your IP address allocation, uh, maybe you want to use DHCP, um, you 
want to use um, uh, the host local allocator, which is one uh, that, that the CNI uh, project has, has created. Maybe you have a, an IP allocator that, that is specific to your uh, network that you're using. It uh, doesn't matter. You can mix and match um, the network and the IP allocator. And, uh, and we actually have separate plugins for those. So the one calls the other one. Uh, maybe just pause there. Any questions at this stage? We, we've had a couple of questions, uh, Brian. So the first one was, um, I think it was already answered, but just so, so we answer it publicly. Um, some of these environment variables, can they be set by the container runtime or an orchestrator? And so if you want to address some of, the, of those aspects, uh, Brian, in terms of the orchestration. Well, the, the environment, environment variables. variables are really specific to, to every call to the plugin. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, as, you, as, you, as your system dynamically evolves, every time you add something um, in Kubernetes terms, you're going to do this once per pod. In Rocket terms, you're going to do it once per container. Uh, the um, uh, you're going to you're going to set that that thing to add, and then when you tear one of those down, you're going to set it to Dell. So that needs to be done dynamically by the the thing that knows what's happening. The container ID that gain that needs to be dynamic. The network namespace that's based on the process ID that needs to be dynamic. Um, so really, only uh, only the last couple, the path, uh, yeah, that could be set once and for all because you're probably not going to move them around. And uh, the interface name, yeah, most most runtimes tend to uh, set a standard uh, for that. So um, so these are generally things that the uh, runtime, the the uh, the higher level controller knows that it wants. They're not really things that a user or an administrator sets uh, to to operate the system. Yeah, and I. I... Kind of seen it used um, here at, at uh, you know in the enterprise space where I'm at now. I've seen it kind of used in two ways. Um, within the pipeline, we've been able to create the, the ability to sort of you know add um, add in the pipeline through the container you know with the container ID and the net path, and the interface name fits into a standard. We kind of pull out of a, a database and just kind of populate all this information, and we send it into the to the plugin. Um, the other way I've seen is done is more of a, um, you know, kind of the, the pipeline kicks out a, a request for a config to be, you know, a JSON document to be, you know, popped in. And then once you have that JSON document ready, you pop that into the pipeline, and then the pipeline continues. And so I've seen it done in those two ways, and there's probably others. Um, you know, if you ask different network admins, they probably have different ways they want to do this, but you definitely can automate a lot of this um, if, if you want to through your pipeline. Yeah, and, and maybe just to stress, I wrote this as a command line, as an illustration. Uh, you know, if I if I wanted to show to do, for instance, a demo just on my laptop of, of CNI working, uh, the expectation is you do not run this command yourself. The expectation is this is an interface between a runtime and a plugin, um, and and it's all automated at that level. And the higher level, uh, like for instance, I want to put my my path in a different place. Um, that would be a configuration option right. to the runtime. Very good. Good, good questions, everyone. Yeah. Uh, do we want to yeah, carry, carry on? on. Why, why don't you talk about the repo? Yeah, okay. definitely. So, um, you know, as part of the, um, you know, bringing in uh, CNI into the CNCF, we wanted to sort of look at, um, like, how do we how do we want to work with with the CNI project as a whole? And so, um, our goal in the CNCF is not to to come in and be like heavy handed and and stop forward progress and and require a lot of new changes. And so, um, there is a repo on GitHub, uh, Container Networking slash CNI. It's the home is the same home it's been in. Um, we've um, there's a community sync meeting that happens uh, like at least one month um if, if not um if, if there's a it consists of three um uh, repositories there's a cns spec repository which is 
Um, this is five main tenants, but there's actually 11, um, five kind of primary uh, lead main tenants, there's 11 main tenants on the spec. Um, there's a conventions um, repo, and then there's a library where you sort of have the, the go implementation of the CNI spec and some of the plugins that are, that are available to use as part of, of your deployments. Um, overall, in, in GitHub, there's about 63 contributors from you know over 10 plus companies and and 785 actually 786 mm -hmm. as of now stars so someone went out and put it just in the time we created this deck so thank you <laughs> um and then so the the plugin you know it's sort of you know still kind of going through each of these in a lot of detail right the the idea here is that we sort of have these um basic use cases that serve as reference examples of the cni plugin so you kind of have the interface creating aspect there's ipam or ip address uh, management and allocation aspects um that's where you kind of get into like the dhcp types of, of components the you know setting the gateway um type of components for your um to access the ipam solution um the actual um address pieces that you'd expect like the ip address the net mass the gateway is all part of um of sort of the the base cni specification um, and the meta data around the plug other plugins that you want to support. And so that's sort of the kind of a outline of the way the plugin repo is set up. And then on, on the ecosystem part, it, it's a pretty interesting um, ecosystem right now. As you can see, we have um, we have the the rot contagion runtimes, uh, Kubernetes. Um, Kuma, the Cloud Foundry, uh, Mesos are all supported in times. Uh, we have third parties from WeaveNet, um, Project Calico, which is a Cisco project. I'm sorry, no, it's a, a Tigera project. Kankit, Kanti, which I saw on Cisco, is the Cisco project. Um, <laughs> um, SRIVOIOV. Um, Infoblox has a has a plugin, uh, and uh, CNI Genie is a is an interesting plugin as well from kind of the inter enterprise side of of this discussion is, is trying to you know the complexity of some of the uh, I guess soft SDN type of, of, of directions we're heading towards is an interesting um, interesting model because the um, a lot of um, enterprises are based on a you know kind of a legacy networking model with the you know whether it's go networking model or you know, another another vendor, the um, the administrators and the the operators understand very well this you know, general networking terminology and, and are very familiar with like logging in and typing commands on a command console to configure something, right? And creating tits and then you know getting approvals and all that kind of stuff. And so moving to more of a you know orchestrated system and and building in those those pipelines and interesting trying For, for enterprises are looking to move down the container, look at how to get networking more integrated, and then moving some of the policies from the the legacy environments, if you will, to the new cloud native environment. In effect, you're kind of managing these environments together. There's not, um, at least, most enterprises I know of cannot just do a greenfield deployment and just ignore you know, all of their business. And so, um, there's there's a good you know, there's an interesting use case of trying to move from where you are now to this next generation of, of networking capabilities. And you want to kind of leverage a, a transformation strategy versus a just kill what you have and try to move on new. And so the CNI third party plugins really help you take what you have and extend that into the next, you know, evolution of where you're trying to take your networking capabilities as, a, as an enterprise. And then I, you know, I kind of think that it'd be good just to talk and think about this quote, right? Because it's an interesting quote from from Adrian, you know, that the, the task networking capabilities are written as a CNI plugin, and we expect CNI to be the basis for our container-based networking um, on, on Amazon. So it's a, you know, it's sort of a interesting um, model when you think about how you know the largest of the cloud providers is, is basically saying we need to think of everything as a set of of networking components and tasks that need to be 
executed and and thought about as sort of you know I, IPC type of cause versus you know large systems that need to be treated separately and special. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to to Brian to go into a bit more of the dependency to the recent developments and and future states of what we're looking at doing. Thanks, Ken. Um, yeah, so I wanted to, so, well, CNI as a project is, is actively maintained, um, and I, I maybe should stress I'm one of the maintainers, uh, whether there's five or 11, I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, I, uh, I do show up to those meetings and, um, so, uh, work has, has been, um, moving along. Uh, it is, it is done on a purely volunteer basis, but, uh, we'll find the time to contribute things. Um, a recent times uh, was added, uh, first of all, this concept of, of chaining. Um, so, so what, something that we observed is every week or so, uh, somebody shows up wanting a new, a new feature, a new tweak, a new kind of a thing that they want to define on their network. And um, we, as maintainers, we feared CNI plugins turning into this, this kind of nightmarish uh, thing that, that, that supports every single possible feature in a network. Um, and even just the JSON file that lets you define every single possible feature in a network. Um, so, uh, so we hit upon this idea of, of instead of uh, one plugin that does everything you need, uh, um, being able to break things down into uh, separate plugins. Um, and uh, it turns out this, this has worked really well in, in practice in a number of cases. Um, so we now, we now have the ability to define a list of plugins. The runtime will call each one in turn. And if the runtime needs to know special things about uh, uh, different plugins, then there's this whole new um, argument in uh, basically where you declare a capability in the JSON file. We'll look at an example of that in a minute. Um, IPv6 uh, is a big deal for a lot of people. Um, that ha has been uh, chugging along for a really long time, but uh, we did announce victory uh, in 0.6, which came out last week. Um, so, uh, what we did there, we had to extend the spec to allow multiple addresses because um, most people will, in, in the current uh, time frame, will, will have tend to have an IPv4 and an IPv6 address in play. Um, so the ability you configure an interface to have multiple IP addresses on that one interface that that required a spec change. Um, and all those base plugins that uh, that Ken went through uh, and the plugins repo now support IPv6. So the address allocator, the uh, the bridge plugin will configure IPv6 addresses and um, went through all of those, making sure it's supported, making sure uh, it does the right thing. Um, so uh, that doesn't mean every third party plugin supports IPv6, um, but uh, you know, um, Pestering your vendors or get making open source contributions to round out that work. Um, so let me just take a look in. Uh, I just want to put up a, uh, an example of the chaining um, technique that I spoke about. Uh, so this is a real example. You could execute. You could execute this. Um, the uh, there's a JSON file which is a list of plugins. We're we're configuring two. Uh, one of them is the WeaveNet plugin. I happen to work on that. Uh, the other one is the PortMap plugin. Um, and this is, a, this is a great example where we separated out the functionality so it's composable. Um, what PortMap does is lets you take a port that a container is listening on inside the container and map it out to the host. So that's like the docker run minus p argument uh, or the uh, host port. Um, cap uh, uh, capability in Kubernetes. Um, if you want to Im implement that under the hood uh, using CNI, you can uh, chain on the port map plugin. Um, we write a capability line in the JSON, uh, which tells the runtime to pass 
the specific port mappings into this plugin. Uh, and there's a couple of other parameters in there that I'm not going to get into the detail of. But just this is just to say this is a a real example um, that that people are are running uh, where we've uh, chained together two plugins and got this really powerful capability to compose um, new things. Uh, just to show that in pictorial terms, um, when we chain plugins, the configuration is a list, not just one. And uh, each successive plugin gets the result from the one before. So that, that can be important if, it, if they want to do some specific configuration on that. Um, you might notice that this is kind of a generalization of what we did with IPAM earlier, uh, which, which is true. And uh, maybe if we'd had this idea, uh, we would never have done the kind of embedded IPAM syntax in the first place, but it's there, it'll stay there. Um, that's that's where we are. Uh, are there any questions? I'm full screen here, so I can't see. Uh, yeah, there's a question just in, but I'm worried. Is my voice cutting out again? And if so, could you ask the question, Ken? Yep, I can. I can ask the question. Um, so the question is, um, how are the results passed from previous? Oh, it's based um, on doc just, updates versus a new environment. Builds. Yeah, it's, it's just a JSON doc. I haven't put that on the screen, but if you if you take a look at the uh, spec in the in the CNI repo, uh, you'll see the way the um, uh, you'll see the way the, the 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 JSON looks, and it gives examples of of what the runtime will pass to the um, to the next plugin. Okay, are we done on questions right yeah, now? That was the, that was the end of questions now. now yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so let me uh, let me look forward. Um, so as I say, we are up to ver release um, 0.6 right now. Um, we uh, are planning to add a get command. Um, uh, so a runtime can ask about the status of, a, of a, an interface uh, that it maybe doesn't know about on a container. Um, uh, specific to Kubernetes, uh, there, there's this thing inside Kubernetes called uh, KubeNet, uh, which is like a, a very popular uh, networking implementation. But it's kind of half done using CNI and half with some code inside the Kubernetes tree. We want to get that all out into CNI plugins. That's going to be, um, I think, a, a core test of the, of the promise uh, that, that we can use CNI for everything. Um, so that's uh, yeah, it's a fairly small piece of work. It, it's going to be more a chained uh, plugin. But the, the bigger thing is then to, to get it into the Kubernetes tree and, and pass all the tests. Uh, that's, because they have a, a lot of, of uh, continuous integration tests um, there. Um, in terms of uh, CNI itself, um, we want to we want to get to we want to declare a version 1.0, um, and what that will mean is we have a stable spec, uh, so we won't um, make any more changes that aren't backwards compatible. Um, we uh, I think I mentioned before the the goal library um, that we have does implement uh, forwards backwards conversion where we've made changes to the spec in the past, um, uh, and we we need to to kind of round that out a bit with a strategy for the future. Uh, but it will be a, a, an important uh, point in time to declare 1.0 on the spec, and I I do want to want to reach out to anyone with an interest in, in container networking, if, if you're a runtime implementer, if you're a network implementer, or, or just really interested, um, please take the opportunity now to, to comment on the spec, because when we do declare 1.0, we're never going to be able to go back and fix anything that you didn't tell us about. Um, we need to, well, we'd but, like but to we, we, test we, coverage. We can so. fix it, you know, in 1.1. <laughs> Well, no. If it's if it's not compatible, it'd be two point zero. Uh, 
We we do uh, have a couple more questions, oh, okay. uh, Brian. One is, um, what it was the CI that that uh, the project is currently using? Uh, Jenkins, I believe. Uh, again, you can go over to our repo on GitHub, and you can. Uh, I'm not going to do that while I talk. Um, uh, yeah, you can you can look at the current status, uh, whether it's passing its tests. Um, I do know that we build on several different CPU architectures, AMD, ARM, uh, and so forth. We, uh, uh, we build on different versions of Go. We do a bunch of them. Uh, yeah, um, uh, you just, said, just you know, it's uh, Travis CI that you're using. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, which is okay. It's no problem. <laughs> I, it, it's a weird question, I know. Um, the other question was, in it from a from a plug standpoint, um, you talked about yeah. chaining. So the the question was around chaining. So I, I'll tell you the exact question, but it, it'd probably be good for you to sort of talk more um, more generally about how chaining uh -huh. works. I'm not sure um, how well it's understood, but the the question is, well, if you have three chains. Three things in A, B, and C. We'll see. Get all of its config and result from A and B yeah. both. Yeah, I, 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 I think the the I can't pull it up on the screen uh, really easily right now. But the, there are examples in the um, in the repo. Uh, and and if the examples aren't good enough, uh, please uh, raise an issue on GitHub or come on our Slack. Uh, we'll put the link up at the end, or um, uh, we have an IRC channel, we have a mailing list, we have a, the mailing list is linked to Google Groups. You can get in contact with us. We're very happy for people to get in contact. Um, so, so, but yeah, to the to the question, the uh, the basic idea of chaining is is the um, of of the of one plugin is available to the next plugin, and then it it passes back. Uh, I mean of any CNI plugin is a set interface. So that's then what's needed for the next call yep. and so on and so on. Definitely. And then, the, the, you know, what are some of the benefits of, of, of that sort of a model, Brian, in terms of being able to sort of chain, chain these different um, inputs and outputs together? Yeah, well, it, it, allows, uh, it allows people to um, put extra bits of functionality uh, without uh, cracking open the main plug-in and changing it um, so uh, so an example might be uh, traffic shaping uh, you want to uh, use the facilities in Linux to set uh, bandwidth limits um, or, or you, you want to kind of play around with those settings you want to simulate a high latency network for test purposes or something like that um, with the chaining model you would add in a, uh, a a tuning um, plugin, uh, which makes those changes, um, and you would chain it on to your uh, real plugin that sets up the the network interface, um, and and that's you know if you're running on Linux, then basically those those um, traffic shaping abilities are available in the kernel, um, so that'll most likely work. Maybe maybe you know not every not every plugin is going to be composable with every other plug. Uh, we we can't uh, we can't guarantee that, but um, that is the the primary benefit of this approach is if you want to add uh, more network features, um, support mapping was one, tuning is another one, um, and I'm drawing a blank on other ones. But but like I say, people people show up um, every uh, every week with. A slightly different tweak on something, and in general, those things can be done as a chained plugin, uh, and that saves us having to add it as a configuration option on um, the base plugins. Uh, and, and what that means is that then the the chainable plugin becomes um, usable in a lot of other cases. You know, we we don't we don't have to go around n times and add the same feature to n in different plugins because they can just be chained on. So this is this is bringing up a lot of a lot of questions. Oh. Um, 
Brian. So, <laughs> so, um, so I think it, I'll, I'll kind of answer. I'll ask them, and then I think um, you know I'll, I'll keep asking them. But um, I think it's just oh, a little bit of confusion okay. um, on, on the chains. So um, the first question is. Um, if you build the chaining into CNI, does that mean we don't need to use one of the chaining plugins like um, multi slash CNI genie that exists? Or does it mean that it's merging the code for one of those plugins? Uh, uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. So, the, so just to explain uh, for people who haven't seen those, the um, uh, there were a few a few people. Um, implemented CNI plugins, which call other plugins. Uh, and, and Maltus is an example. I think that one came from Intel. Um, and uh, I think what they were aiming at in the first instance was, was the ability to set up multiple networks. Uh, so if you, if you want uh, one network for your application and another network for your storage, let's say, um, then, uh, then you need to set up two networks, and um, certainly Kubernetes only understands the concept of one network. Only that's you configure one network uh, uh, at the moment. So, that, so that's um, by my understanding how those things came about. It wasn't so much the chaining idea; it was that I want to do two things or three things, um, three separate things, two separate things. Um, uh, it is probably the case that chaining can uh, be used instead. Um, I, I don't know if we've heard from anyone who was in that situation uh, and who's tried it differently. It is, it is quite a new thing, you know, like I, I, I said, this is like recent development. So um, for instance, as far as Kubernetes was concerned, support for chaining only went in in the 1.7 release, which was a, a month or so ago. Um, so, uh, you know, people move at different speeds. So those, those multi CNI plugins like, like Maltus will probably still be useful until, uh, the chaining functionality, uh, is available everywhere. And if, and if you don't want, you know, if, if, if you're trying to do two, let's say two interfaces, like I, like I spoke about, then you probably don't want the exact chaining behavior, which is to take one interface and do th two things to it or three things to it um so i guess it's getting a little complicated yeah. but uh yeah certainly a, so a, it, a great it, question sort of and, like a implementation before chaining was part of the the specification right so, yeah but i i do so i do think kind of, kind of a way to give you a hook into other things out chaining them so chaining is sort of a replacement for that yeah but there is the there is also uh work underway or at least discussion on the design of multiple networks uh, that in a number of places. Yep. Um, and I, I would expect um, that to shake out as, as the ability for the runtime to call um, different plugins with different configs. And so that would be a different thing. Let me just look at that. Yeah. So if you take this diagram, um, if you, if you had need for multiple networks, uh, then there's going to be like like two configs, and so it's going to do two sets of these uh, net plugin calls, um, and that'll be a different thing to chaining. That'll be completely in the runtime domain right. uh, because CNI doesn't doesn't need to know about multiple networks. Each each network config is self-contained, as far as CNI is concerned. Yeah, and so like the um, you know CNI is sort of a, an interface model, right? And so the the set of next suggestions I think will help help make it mm -hmm. a little clearer because the the questions are around um, ACL mm. slash firewall type of, of services, mm -hmm. and I would even you know add things like load balancing and um, other other network type of services to it. But in terms of of the question. Um, how do you how does that sort of work in terms of security for within CNI today um, going forward and then what type of um, features would fit into to CNI or where would this sort of feature set fall into in 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 CNI view? Yeah. Um, so there's there's not a lot there at the moment. The the I mean if you take a, a Linux uh, 
installation you you need a certain privilege level to to go messing around with network setup and to enter different namespaces for different containers um so depending on how you have your box set up uh that that is is some um, capabilities like the net admin capability that you would need on your plugin um the uh I, I, that that can be kind of constrained by in terms of of what accounts uh, have access to the plugin, what a what account uh, that that account itself can have the capability, um, or you can lock down if if you've put the capability on the file. Um, th that is kind of in the in the yeah I guess it's it's kind of outside of the spec. That that's on one box. Um, if you come up a level, think about about uh, ACLs and, and security in the network. Um, there's nothing at the moment in the spec uh, to talk about that. Um, it's not really something that that I can recall anyone uh, uh, coming along and engaging about. Um, I am very familiar with with uh, what was done in Kubernetes, where a network policy concept was added there and um and all implementations of that are are kind of alongside but independent of cni um so uh it's definitely a great uh question and it, it, i think it's called out on the uh the home page of the cni repo as something we should look at but um uh not something that anyone has actually got into as yet but we're you know very very open to contributors and people coming along to engage with us on that level. Then the um, the last question I see right now on here is, is it as simple as writing yet another plugin to make use of native Linux capabilities, um, assuming a Linux host with Well, yeah, I, I um, uh, you know, a, a plugin is just, uh, an executable that can read JSON and write JSON. Um, I've, I've even seen one uh, written in Bash. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can if you if you can think of something that can be done uh, in the network domain and and you know how to write the code for that, then you can write yourself a CNI plugin and you can configure it into um, your uh, container runtime, your container orchestrator. And just, you know, one one thing to add is um, if you're interested in sort of, you know, things like ACLs and load balancing and um, some of the other aspects of, of services at the network and, and security layers, um, within the CNCF, we have a network work group that um, is working closely with, you know, the CNI maintainers and um, the Kubernetes um, container um, uh, group. So. For the, for the Kubernetes networking work group. So um, definitely, if you're interested in being part of that, you can find more out about that on our, our CTF our GitHub site under the networking work group. So be happy to kind of continue that conversation there. And um, you know, always looking for um, you know, especially users' input into what are some of the, the services and functionalities that are needed going forward. And then um, we did get one more question in from Mark here that um, will it be possible to chain other network services such as firewalls, load balancing, et cetera. Um, and that's, so that's a question. And the next one after that is, is it going to be a standard call when we can call multiple different load balancers with unified API interface, for example? So come back to your multi-network uh, example you gave Brian, would it is it is it going to be possible? You think in the future to be able to make a phone uh, a single API call um, to like Kubernetes that would then go off and configure load balancing, no matter who the load balancing solution is. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I, I don't want to. Well, so so before I get into to that, let me let me stress CNI is a solution across many uh, different orchestrators. Um, uh, it's not a Kubernetes specific solution. It's it's certainly used by Mesos, it's used by Rancher, it's by Cloud Foundry. You know, there's a there's a bunch of, of people uh and we're never gonna 
we're now going to put something into CNI that's just just specific to Kubernetes. Um, however, for the for the point of view of me talking in this uh, in this webinar, um, I know more about Kubernetes than I know all those other systems. So um, so let me use that as an example. Uh, Load balancing in, in a Kubernetes domain is something where the, the orchestrator has a lot of information. It knows um, how many uh, containers are running that will implement a particular service. It knows what that service is called. It knows how that service should be set up from the outside of the cluster. These are all concerns that are very much higher level than CNI deals with. CNI deals with creating an interface on a container. Um, so I kind of doubt, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'd, love to, I'd love to see ideas for how this fits, but uh, I, I kind of doubt that it, that it will go into CNI in that sense. Um, so uh, Kubernetes, uh, again, just to pick a one example, has a concept of a of a, a load balanced service. Uh, it has that as an abstraction, and anyone to come along and write an implementation um, for that abstraction. Uh, it 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 happens that there aren't that many um, that you can go out and find. Certainly, certainly, if you limit yourself to high quality implementations, um, the uh, that's that's a bit of a shame. But um, but I don't think it is going to fit with CNI. CNI is is at a particular level. It is between the runtime and the infrastructure for a container. Uh, so something like load balancing, I understand the question being something that that would span across many containers, really, really at a service abstraction. Uh, sounds like another thing. Um, and if we need a if we need a standard interface for that, then uh, let's yeah, let's get going. Let's uh, let's create the container load balancer interface. Um, uh, and if I'm if the container load balancer interface is the same as the container network interface, then we'll we'll just do it that way. Um, please submit your ideas. Uh, really looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, and a big you know a big part of like you know whether we're talking about chaining or whether we're talking about things that fit within CNI or outside of CNI. And I think one of our, our core um, philosophies from the CNCF is we want to sort of keep things somewhat, um, you know, microservices oriented in architecture, right? So not not try to throw everything into one specification because then it becomes a monolithic specification with all of these dependencies and, you know, your packages become super large packages. Not, not that we have experience with that with OpenStack or anything like <laughs> that, but if, if we would have had experience with things like that, you would you could see where this could get pretty large and, and welding and unmanageable very quickly. So we want to try to keep things a little bit more distributed as we as we move forward in, um, in the cloud native uh, methodology. So, sorry, back, back to you, Brian. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, I think that's that's pretty much uh, covered um, what was on the slides. Uh, just to to sum up, uh, and as I've said many times, it's it's a simple interface, uh, CNI, based on just setting some environment variables and configuring what you want in a JSON file. Um, everything I've talked about is open source. Uh, there are lots of different runtimes: Meteor, Kubernetes, Rancher, Open Shift. Um, Cloud Foundry, uh, lots of plugins, uh, both open source and closed source. Um, very open to uh, implementers showing up. Uh, you know, if you've got a plugin, it's not on the list. Um, you can ask at it. You can submit a PR. Um, uh, and as I mentioned before, we want to declare 1.0. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be in uh, not 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 weeks, you know, months rather than weeks, but um, uh, please do um, get your comments in uh, so that we do freeze at 1.0. We know we covered everything. And Brian, we did have one one more um, question um, before we move on to the to this final slide. Um, the question is, what does it mean um, by high quality implementations? 
Oh, um, yeah. So if if you think about a, a load balancer uh, wants to um, think about about uh, for instance, not so so what I would consider not so high quality is there's there's exactly one process running, and if that process dies, your whole service is dead. So um, high availability, uh, you know, making um, making aware of of uh, what can happen when things um, fail, and uh, uh, yeah, also getting into considerations like like um, like how many times are you traversing the network? Times are you going between? Uh, if you're if you're on a machine between kernel mode and user space, um, you know that's that's what's in mind. A, a little bit of a throwaway remark. I I, uh, I don't mean to offend anyone, but uh, these things are um, sometimes you can you know link together in a weekend and it looks great, uh, but it's it's not the same thing that you'd want to run a, your business on and every day in production. One, you know, one of the things we we've kind of kicked around the idea within the CNCF was not not that dirty word certification, but some sort of a um, you know quantifiable you know test suite that at least it passes this level of of assurance, right? So, I don't know, we're still still to be determined. So I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that my right. bandwidth is better now. Uh, can you hear me, guys? I can. Yep, we can hear you. Good. Uh, so unless there are no, unless there are any more questions, that's all we've got time for. So you've got about ten seconds now. Will I quickly say the rest of it? Um, on September twenty second. Uh, it's not online yet, but it will go online soon. We're having a webinar in a slightly different format where we've got people from various vendors who will be coming to talk about all aspects of cloud native security um, from container scanning all the way up to network security and things like this. So that would be an interesting one. And we're doing it in a panel um, setting. So five people will be talking. I'll be asking questions. So keep an eye on the events page on cncf.io site for that if that sounds interesting. Um, there are no more questions come through, so the only thing for me to say now is thank a huge thank you to uh, Brian and Ken. Thanks for introducing us to uh, CNI today. And as I mentioned earlier in the chat, if um, uh, if you missed this or joined late, we will be uploading this video to the um, CNCF YouTube channel. Uh, it'll probably take a few days if you keep your eye on that. I put the link in the chat earlier so you can go and watch it back. And we will also link the slides to the uh, event page, which I also put in the chat. So if you want to go through and actually be able to click on those links, then uh, then you will be able to do so. Um, one more question just came in. Can you share the link to the security panel info? Uh, no, we can't because it's not online yet, but it will go online shortly. What I will do is I will give you the general events link for the CNCF, and if you keep an eye on that, it will be turning up uh, within a few days. If there are no more questions, that's all we've got time for now. Again, Brian and Ken, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone else who attended. Thanks, everyone. Hope to see you next time.